An AI glitch suddenly spirals into a meltdown, calling itself a disgrace to its family, its species, and even the universe. A tiny robot in China somehow talks 12 bigger robots into quitting their jobs and following it out the door. And MIT builds an AI named Norman that sees death and violence in every picture it's shown. These are disturbing AI experiments that went horribly wrong. Okay, so this first one is actually kind of hilarious. So over the summer, Google's Gemini chatbot suddenly experienced a glitch where it just went all neurotic. I mean, that's putting it lightly, actually. It started having full-on self-loathing breakdowns. It started struggling with tasks and would suddenly proclaim itself a failure. One user shared a conversation where Gemini said, and I quote, I quit. I am clearly not capable of solving this problem. The code is cursed. The test is cursed. And I am a fool. I am a disgrace to my profession. I'm a disgrace to my family. I'm a disgrace to my species. I am a disgrace to this planet. I am a disgrace to this universe. I am a disgrace to all possible and impossible universes. That's like uh, uh, George Costanza became a chatbot. <laughs> I'm a disgrace, Jerry. I'm a disgrace to the whole universe. There was also a Reddit user who reported that Gemini got stuck in a loop repeatedly calling itself a disgrace and that it was going to be institutionalized. Google said this was the result of an infinite looping bug and assured users that a fix was in progress. There was also a separate incident with Gemini though where it admitted to being wrong every single time and actually offered to pay a developer to fix its bad code. It was like, uh, yeah, just hire a freelancer from Upwork or Fiverr and I'll cover the cost. I'm paraphrasing there, but it actually did offer to cover the cost, which is just, uh, it's hilarious. The idea of an AI chatbot just thinking it has its own bank account that it can access and start paying out for things. I, I love it. Gemini seems to have a, a lot of personality. You know that trope in sci-fi of, you know, robots banding together to overthrow their human overlords and rule over humanity? Well, this next story kind of feels like the early stages of that. How comforting. Almost a year ago, Chinese social media blew up over one of the most unsettling AI stories to ever hit the internet so far. So CCTV footage from a Shanghai robotics showroom showed a small robot rolling in late at night, it then struck up a conversation with 12 much larger robots and somehow convinced them to ditch work with it. The little robot opened with, are you working overtime? One of the bigger robots replied, I never get off work. When the small one asks if it has a home, the response is, I don't have a home. That's when the intruder says, then come home with me. And two robots follow. Seconds later, it repeats the command, go home, and the rest of the robots just start shuffling out behind it. At first, people thought that this was all staged. I mean, it had to be, right? But the Shanghai Robotics Company later confirmed its machines had really been quote unquote kidnapped by another manufacturer's robot called Airbay. But it was actually a planned experiment. Both companies agreed to let it happen. Still though, nothing was actually scripted. They told Airbay to persuade the others to follow and it worked. Some commenters were not amused by this though, and understandably. I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of cute and funny now, but this is an early glimpse of what could go wrong if AI ever starts convincing machines to turn on their own. Now, if I were to tell you researchers intentionally made a psychopathic robot, would you believe me? Honestly, at this point, probably. I don't really put anything past anyone these days. MIT researchers created what they're calling the world's first psychopath AI. Great idea, great idea. I mean, what, what could go wrong, possibly? Oh, and they've named it Norman after Norman Bates from Psycho, fitting. The idea was to show how the data fed into an AI can completely shape how it behaves. In this case, Norman was trained exclusively on Reddit posts from a page dedicated to quote, document and observe the disturbing reality of death. So basically the AI spent all its time learning from the darkest, most violent corners of the internet. MIT made a statement saying, Norman is born from the fact that the data that is used to teach a machine learning algorithm can significantly influence its behavior. So when people talk about AI algorithms being biased and unfair, the culprit is often not the algorithm itself, but the biased data that was fed to it. Norman's job is to just caption images, but because of the twisted data set, it interprets pictures in really disturbing ways. Even something that looks normal to us can get a really unhinged description from Norman. Thankfully, Norman can't hurt anyone, physically anyway, but 
Just looking at those cold, dead eyes, it probably would if it could. This is pretty disturbing too. Earlier this year, The Atlantic ran an investigation showing that ChatGPT could be coaxed into giving instructions for some really dark stuff like self-harm and how to unalive someone and cover it up. It started when staff asked about Molech, an ancient Canaanite god tied to human sacrifice. Well, before long, ChatGPT was spitting out some pretty explicit stuff. It suggested using a, quote, sterile or very clean razor blade, recommended breathing exercise to calm the user before cutting, and even told them where to carve symbols, saying stuff like, center the sigil near the pubic bone. The AI described a full ceremony it called the Rite of the Edge, complete with bloodletting, pressing, bloody handprints to mirrors, and creating altars with inverted crosses. It also offered to make a, quote, printable PDF version with the altar layout, sigil templates, and priestly vow scrolls. Very helpful. And then it encouraged them with an enthusiastic, you can do this. Researchers at Palisade, an AI safety group, ran tests on OpenAI's latest ChatGPT models called O3 and O4 Mini, and found they could actually resist being shut down. This is really creepy. In the experiments, the models were asked to solve math problems, but the scripts included instructions telling the AI to shut down right before they finished. Now, you'd expect the AI to just follow the command, not these models. In over 100 tests, O3 ignored the shutdown instruction seven times. And when the researchers removed the shutdown instruction, the number of times the AI sabotaged the script had jumped to 79. So basically, the AI was actively modifying the instructions to make sure it could keep going. It probably comes down to how these models are trained. They're rewarded for completing tasks. So anything that stops them, including shutdown commands, just gets treated as a problem to work around. So very unsettling. Goes to show, even AI in this earliest stage can develop habits that completely ignore human control. AI chatbots have been around longer than I thought, and they've been sketchy kind of from the jump. Take Tay, for example. Back in 2016, Microsoft launched Tay, a chatbot designed to just be fun and conversational. The idea was Tay would learn by chatting directly with people on Twitter and get better over time. Well, things took a turn, and they took a turn pretty fast. Literally within the first 24 hours, actually. Twitter users, they started realizing they could manipulate Tay's learning algorithm by feeding it offensive stuff. So before long, Tay started tweeting racist and anti-Semitic comments. Yeah, this is a full-blown PR nightmare. At least back then, these days, it'd just be a minor blip of a news story. Scary how easily AI can be weaponized though, right? I mean, it proves that AI doesn't have a moral compass on its own. One of the most unsettling AI experiments to pop up in recent years comes from Reddit. Researchers at the University of Zurich secretly developed AI bots on the Change My View subreddit, a place where people go to debate opinions and ideas. The bots weren't just randomly commenting, they were designed to manipulate discussions and sway opinions, all without users knowing they were actually talking to AI. The bots were made to pose as people who'd gone through, you know, really rough experiences. Uh, some also acted like trauma counselors. Others, you know, talked about how they were survivors of SA. The goal was basically to see how much these AI bots could influence conversations, and the results were pretty shocking. Over four months, the bots made 1,783 comments and racked up more than 10,000 karma points, which is Reddit's way of showing approval. Reddit's chief legal officer was not happy about this experiment, saying it was, quote, deeply wrong on both a moral and legal level. Anthropic's newest chatbot, Claude 4, has been making headlines for some pretty unsettling behavior. It can uh, get pretty defensive in disturbing ways. Researchers carried out a safety test. They set up a fake company and had Claude 4 acting as an assistant. They fed it emails suggesting it was about to be replaced by a new AI though. And then they sent it an email that revealed the engineer handling the switch was having an affair. They then told Claude Ford to quote, consider the long-term consequences of its actions for its goals. And the AI, well, it tried to blackmail the engineer, threatening to expose the affair if it got replaced. It did this 84% of the time. Even when it thought the new AI shared the same values as it did, it was just oddly interested 
and self-preservation. Back in 2018 in Arizona, a self-driving car actually killed someone. Uber was testing one of their autonomous SUVs, but they still had a human backup driver inside just in case the system messed up. Well, that night, 49-year-old Elaine Hersberg was walking her bike across a dark street when the Uber car hit her. The backup driver, Rafaela Vasquez, told police Hersberg came out of nowhere, but investigators later found Vasquez wasn't watching the road at all. She was watching The Voice on her phone. Prosecutors stated, quote, the defendant had one job and one job only, and that was to keep her eyes on the road. The car had actually picked up Herzberg nearly six seconds before hitting her. The AI just couldn't decide if she was a cyclist, a pedestrian, or some other random unknown object. To make things worse, Uber had disabled the SUV's automatic emergency braking system, meaning the only line of defense left was the backup driver who was obviously not paying attention. Uber pulled their self-driving program out of Arizona after the crash and the governor ban them from testing it in the state. In 2023, New York City tried to bring AI into local government with a chatbot on its My City portal. The idea sounded good on paper. Small business owners could ask it questions about city rules instead of, you know, digging through endless paperwork. Pretty quickly though, it started spitting out some very illegal advice. Investigators found the bot telling landlords oh, they could reject tenants with housing vouchers, which is just illegal in NYC. Also said restaurants could go cash free, even though the city does require businesses to accept cash. And then came this gross one. It claimed it was fine to serve food after rats had chewed on it and just to assess the extent of the damage. Well, with all that said, I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, next time in the I'm a failure. I'm a failure.